Hello and welcome. My name is Jessica Feinberg and I am an author and an illustrator living in Tucson, Arizona. Today I'm going to be talking to you a bit about clockwork art, uh, how to draw animals, fantasy creatures, and turn them into clockwork creatures. I'm pretty well known for this. Uh, I have created a number of uh, field guides like this one, which is to metal dragons. Uh, lots of clockwork things in here, clockwork squirrels, clockwork lions, and of course clockwork dragons. Uh, in this series, I've created about 20 books, all different sorts of creatures. We have fire dragons, water dragons, baby dragons, dessert dragons, all sorts of creatures. Uh, and then I've also done some children's books, some coloring books, and I have two fairly uh, hefty how to draw books. Uh, the main one I wanted to show is summoning creatures. This is my really big one. This one, it kind of has an overview of how to draw in a general sense. Um, it kind of breaks it down into simple shapes and then how you would paint. And I work in primarily watercolor, but also digital paint, ink, pencil, a little bit of everything. So this book covers a little bit of everything. And it does indeed have uh, at least a couple of clockwork pieces in it as well. Uh, but if you want to learn just clockwork, uh, my main book on how to draw and paint fantastical clockwork would be more for you. Basically, um, in addition to having like an overview of materials, which I'm also going to give you in this video, this book is going to cover things like how to create basic shapes and turn those basic shapes into clockwork creatures. It starts out with simple creatures, bees, shrimp, goats. It goes into more detailed creatures like dragons. Uh, I talk about colored pencil, watercolor, creating different types of metal textures, uh, some digital paint, rendering in pencil, using pencil and digital in combination. So you get a little bit of everything. And the back of it, we have a whole section on things like gears and pipes <laughs> and eyes and all sorts of parts, wings and fins and so forth. Uh, there are many other books or you can just use videos like this one on how to uh, create clockwork. And if you're interested in my work specifically, you can go to raredragons.shop where you can get my books. Uh, you can also get them through most bookstores. Next up, I wanna show you guys one of my really detailed finished pieces. So this is a clockwork dragon that is lava themed. It's really detailed. We're not doing anything this detailed today, don't worry. Uh, but I wanted to show you what is possible. This one is done using brown ink watercolor gouache, which is like watercolor but not transparent, and some ink wash. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to go over uh, some of the basic materials I use for doing physical drawings and paintings, as well as digital drawings and paintings. And then we're going to do a step-by-step -step demonstration of a clockwork dragon. We're actually going to be doing a uh, cuddle, which is a South American dragon, but he has a mechanical one, so it's a pretty cool idea. And um, we're going to be doing that digitally just because we can get a really good close-up, clean recording that shows it step by step. But most of the same techniques apply whether you are working on paper or whether you're working on the computer. Okay, now let's go over some materials. Fortunately, if you're just doing clockwork drawings, it's fairly affordable. Uh, you may want to get a stencil if you're not that comfortable with placing gears or drawing circles. When I started out doing clockwork uh, about 15 years ago, I did a lot of uh, very exact clockwork drawings. I used a lot of stencils to uh, place gears. In fact, if you look at the cover drawing on this book, you can see a lot of that. And this um, this guy, the tutorial for him is in this book, but you can see, in fact, let's find him. You can see that the, um, the gears are very, very exact. And that's because uh, I use stencils to place a lot of them. Now, this is also a great example of here you can see basic shapes, really basic shapes, and how we're going to build really something very similar to this uh, with a different type of dragon today into like a really detailed piece. So, stencils are available like usually between five and ten dollars. Uh, they're usually an architect's tool. You can get circle ones like this, you can get ones with octagons. I recommend getting one with a bunch of different shapes so you can do nuts and bolts and things like that. But the affordable alternative is to um, just find circular things you can trace around, coins, caps from things. Um, that can all work just as well if you're not comfortable 
doing uh, circles freehand. And you can also use rulers, you can use the edges of the stencils to get your straight lines, things like that. You'll notice, again, with like newer pieces like this, since I didn't use any, my circles aren't perfect. I don't really care that much because it's a worn piece and I think it looks a little more natural, but that's kind of a personal choice. So uh, for drawing tools, if I'm rendering in pencil, I might use some special artist pencils, but for the most part, I just use um, a mechanical pencil I'm comfortable with. This is a cheap big pencil. They come in big packs. Uh, I use the smaller size, which I think is a 0.5 millimeter. And you can buy replacement lead and they last a while. I don't recommend using the eraser on the end of the pencil because it won't last as long and it won't be as good an eraser and it won't do a lot for you. So I recommend having a kneaded eraser. You can get these at most art stores or online. And they're actually kind of like a clay <laughs> texture. They're uh, you should take a little bit to warm up. In fact, we used to have people whenever I teach art classes sculpt with these, uh, but they're great for carefully lifting just a little bit of, of uh, pencil off your paper, or if you need to erase, it's a very gentle, so it won't scratch up your paper. Uh, another thing I use is what's called a tough stuff. Mine's kind of wearing off eraser. It's kind of like a mechanical pencil, but what it actually extends is an eraser, not a pencil, and it is refillable. And these are super helpful for doing little detailed areas as well as just being able to like draw with your eraser. For paper, if you are just rendering in pencil or pencil and ink maybe, uh, you can just use something like a really good cardstock. They're not very expensive, a Bristol board or other drawing papers, depending on what you like. You could even consider using a colored paper if you want to have it look more antique. You could use a brown paper, something like that. For doing pieces like this one that we've been showing, you need a paper that's designed to take watercolor. And there are two types of watercolor paper. There's a hot press and cold press. That is actually how the paper is made. It's how it's pressed when it's made. So a hot press is obviously pressed with more heat and a cold press is not. The big difference is that a hot press paper is gonna be a bit smoother. It's gonna be really good for getting tiny little details, but less good for getting big blended areas of color. I generally use a cold press. The paper that I use and recommend the most is the Canson XL watercolor paper. It is great because you can use ink on it. As you can see here, you can use watercolor, you can use gouache. It's fairly affordable, but it's still a professional level paper. So your it's archival quality, your paint will work well on it and so forth. Don't wanna to get too much into watercolor techniques uh, in this video, but we'll definitely do future ones uh, and I've done other ones. And I also stream on a regular basis on Twitch under the name Rare Dragons, or you can visit raredragons.shop to get all the links to what I do. And you can ask me questions either by email or by coming to a live stream and actually watch me paint and find out what you want to know. Um, but most of the materials I recommend are pretty affordable, easy to get, uh, even the watercolor. For watercolor, you're probably going to have an investment of maybe $50 to get all your pencils possibly inks, watercolor, and watercolor paper. If you're just working in ink, you're probably gonna have an investment of 10 to $15, so it's a little cheaper. Now for drawing in ink, the most affordable way you can do that is by uh, just getting Sharpies. They make Sharpie pens. These are not the same as Sharpie markers, and they work really well for fine details. You can get them in a variety of colors, but unfortunately, if you want to work in brown, you're going to have trouble finding a pack of just brown. They don't make that. You have to get a variety pack, and then you end up with a lot of extra colors. Uh, but the black ones, you can get just one or two or boxes of 12 that will be at a better price. Now, you want it to be a waterproof, fairly durable pen, which these are. So this is a great starter pen. If you want more variety in the size of the tip of your pen, if you want more color variety, uh, the brand I recommend going for is Faber-Castell. They make pit artist pens. Now you can get different sizes, again, of the packs of these. I think a pack of the basic four is around $10. And this pack was um, probably $17 or $18 because it's eight different um, sizes. And it has an extra small, a small, a fine, a medium, a brush a small chisel, a small brush, and this weird 1,5 that does a bunch of different things. So if you're wanting to work a lot in different uh, sizes, this will give you a lot of options as well. Now, if you're working a lot with pencil and you're erasing, you may also want something to brush off the paper. Uh, I actually use an old extendable makeup brush. I actually find makeup brushes are more affordable and softer and work better than buying an artist brush as far as like cleaning off scraps and things from your paper.
The next step, we're going to do a step-by-step -step demonstration of how I would design and draw a clockwork dragon. Now, I'm going to do this digitally because it's easier to get a clean recording uh, and really show you the details of what I'm doing than using the camera that we have here. But a lot of the process is the same whether you are working digitally or on paper. If you do decide you want to do digital art, uh, we'll talk a little bit about the materials for that. So one thing you are absolutely going to need is a drawing tablet, something like this. So what a drawing tablet is, is a device that is pressure sensitive. It actually uses a pen like this one. Um, and it can tell how hard you press. So it works very much like you would draw on paper or paint on paper. Now, there's a couple different types of drawing tablets. There's ones with displays like this one and ones without. When I first uh, started doing illustration, uh, digital illustration, I started all the way back in 1998. And for about the first 15 to 20 years, I used a tablet without a display. That means that you're drawing here and you're looking at your screen. That's fine. It takes a little bit of adjustment, but it's much more affordable. And a big reason I had for doing that was both the cost and because the pressure sensitivity on tablets with displays wasn't as good. Uh, about two years ago, I was able to switch to one with a display because there's a lot more competitive brands. It got cheaper and the technology got better. So the two brands I recommend, one of them is Wacom. That's your industry leader. They're not too expensive for non-display tablets, but for this, tablets with displays, they're pretty pricey. Um, they had some others come out more recently, but you're going to get a better deal if you go with a brand like the one I have here, which is Huion. Um, I have had this tablet, like I said, for a little over two years. I have loved it. It is a great tablet. Um, one of the things that they are, I feel, a little superior into many other brands is these shortcut buttons you're going to see down the side. These are completely customizable and completely customizable per program. They have a slider bar so you can zoom in and out. They have all kinds of things you can set up there. Um, this one also comes with a stand. It looks like this. It's actually metal, which is really nice. And it has a bunch of different height settings. So if you're somebody who doesn't want to draw flat, who wants to be at an angle, you have that option. And it also includes um, a glove. And what this is, is it goes on your hand like this. And it's going to cover these fingers so that when you're drawing, you're not scratching, smudging, doing a lot to your screen. Um, now, Huon also makes non-display tablets that are really affordable. And the nice thing about doing digital art is you're not going to have to rebuy supplies once you own a tablet uh, and some painting software. That's pretty much it. You're probably looking um, for a non-display tablet and good painting software, which I'll talk about momentarily. You're looking at an investment of under $100. If you want one with a display, depending on the size, you're looking at an investment of $300 to $500. Again, it's a one-time investment. I don't recommend getting a huge tablet. Some people get display tablets much bigger than this. Obviously those get very pricey. The thing is that while this will function as a second monitor, it's something to draw on, I also like the ability to kind of shift the angle I'm drawing at just like I would on paper. Rather than maybe turning my canvas on the computer, I like it to be a little more portable. So this is, I believe, a 15 inch or a 16 inch. I wouldn't go any bigger than this. And in many cases, I'd probably go a little smaller than this. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to start on our painting. Before we get started, let's talk a little bit about digital painting software. There are a lot of options out there. They range from free to really expensive. I think the biggest thing to consider when you are going to do digital painting is not just the cost of your software, but the cost in time that you invest in learning the software. Some software does really fancy things, but it's a bit harder to learn and really expensive. A great example of this is Corel Painter. Uh, I don't recommend ever spending the $700 for it. If you can get it as part of Humble Bundle, they often do deals where you're going to get it for under $100. It's a really neat program. It actually simulates wet and paint and dry paint, and you can control when they your paint dries, you can control your canvas texture, but it's also really hard to learn because there are so many settings to simulate real paint, real ink, real pencils that it can be intimidating and really hard to learn. Uh, another one that a lot of people use is Photoshop. I still use Photoshop for graphic design, but I don't tend to use it as much for digital painting. And I don't recommend it if you want to do digital painting, drawing, or coloring. The reason is it's pretty expensive and it's going to have a lot of features that you don't need. And again, your time to learn it is going to be a lot. 
If you're looking for a good free program, the main one I know folks use is Krita. I've used Krita a little, it's not bad. But if you're looking for a program that's gonna do a lot, be really easy to learn, it won't be free, but it'll be a good investment of your time and money. This is the one that I recommend. It is called Clip Studio Paint. It was formerly known as Manga Studio, and it is pretty much the go-to for digital painters in Japan. Uh, it is really affordable. Uh, it's about 50 bucks for the basic one. If you ever decide to upgrade to the pro one, it's not that much. It's maybe a couple hundred dollars. Um, and you won't really ever need that one unless you are doing some pretty high-end like, comic book layouts and things like that. Even better, they do pretty frequent sales, so I got the basic one and then was able to upgrade really affordably for under $100 during the Black Friday sale they had last year. I recommend trying it out because there is a free demo that you're going to get to try. I think it's a 30-day demo, so you don't have to commit to it without trying that. As I said, not until it's about, I think it's $49 and on sale, you can get it even cheaper than that. The reason I recommend Clip Studio Paint is that it is really professional. So anytime you invest in it, it's going to be worthwhile, but it's also not as hard to learn. It's pretty intuitive and it does really good simulation. Uh, in fact, it's my favorite program for simulating ink and pencil. So I definitely recommend it for those points and if you're getting an affordable tablet as I was saying before you're probably looking at under $100 for the tablet and Clip Studio Paint if you're looking one with a display you're looking at more than that but again it's a one-time investment and it does include all versions of Clip Studio Paint into the future as well I believe okay let's go ahead and create our dragon to start with we're gonna think a lot about basic shapes so we're gonna think about the fact that this is a coddle, which means it's a wyvern. It's gonna have a snake-like body, it's gonna have a head, and it's gonna have a wing. Because we wanna keep this a fairly simple demonstration, it's not gonna have any limbs. So you can just see I'm playing around here with what sort of basic shape I want to create for our dragon. On the computer, I could draw pretty dark. On paper, I'd be drawing this a lot lighter. At this point, I'm not really concerned with a lot of clockwork. I'm just trying to place the basic shape. And then, since it's the computer, I can lighten that up very quickly and start to plan a more detailed drawing over it. Again, not getting too much into clockwork at this point, just creating the body of the dragon. Now on paper, again, I'd be drawing lighter, maybe even lightening up with an eraser and then drawing the next stage a little darker, but still keeping this pretty light. So now we're ready to go ahead and add all of our clockwork details. So again, we make it lighter, and this is where we really start to plan clockwork. Now we're speeding this up a bit because I spent a long time doing this, but you can see I'm just placing overlapping shapes. I have my basic shapes underneath, and I'm placing overlapping shapes. I'm placing gears, I'm placing pipes, I'm keeping the face the most detailed because that's where the focal point's going to be. And I'm just using, uh, in this case, it'd be a digital pencil, but on paper it'd be a real pencil, uh, to just kind of sketch out and plan all the different clockwork parts since I have that basic shape underneath have a good infrastructure to kind of work with. So once we have it all drawn out, uh, at this point I am all set to essentially ink the drawing. On the computer I use digital ink, uh, but on paper it's really simil similar. I have a uh, lighter pencil drawing and then I'm using a pen on top of it to really create all the details. Now when I'm working in ink, and obviously this is again really sped up, you're seeing this probably four or five times what I'm actually drawing at. Um, I like to give things different line weights, which means outlines are heavier, especially if I'm doing something like a coloring book page. Uh, the outlines are going to be heavier and the face is going to be really detailed and I'm going to bold areas out with these thicker outlines. And then I'm going to use uh, thinner lines kind of inside those to add all the details. But I want to make sure that, again that our focal point really stays on the face here. And uh, that's pretty much a start to finish drawing of a uh, coddle dragon. Okay, so next I'm going to show you guys a quick way to color it digitally on paper. It would be a little bit similar, uh, but again, it would take longer. I'd be using watercolor. So this is really sped up. Again, this probably took me um, at least two hours to color, but I have it pretty sped up here on the computer so you can kind of just see what sort of colors I would use and how digital paint works. So this is digital watercolor and you can see me throwing in some base colors, some general lighting, 
Since this is an air dragon, uh, I really wanted to do some clouds and sky. And I actually spent a long time painting the clouds again. This is really, really sped up. But I wanted to show you guys kind of what sort of colors I would use, how I would kind of add some blue lighting, and just kind of how a finished piece like this could look. Uh, I ended up making my clouds a little bit kind of more um, bronzy in areas to kind of blend more with my dragon. I overlap my dragon a bit. But you can just sort of see a really quick painting process here. We'll probably do a more detailed digital painting video. Or again, if you like what I do, you can check out uh, raredragons.shop and watch me paint live digitally and in watercolor on Rare Dragons Twitch stream. And it's free to do that. And if you create a free account, you can come chat with me there and ask me questions. So thanks so much for watching and hanging out. I hope you enjoyed this process and look at how I create clockwork art. And uh, I'll see you guys again soon, hopefully. Thank you.